The following program is sponsored by Friends of Life Outreach International. If I keep living like this, I'm going to damage my relationships with my children and my husband, and I don't know if there's any going back. Many Christians say they are free in Christ, but are held captive by fear, anger, shame, isolation, unforgiveness, and control. You know, control to the, but I'm like, is this flower straight? Is that pillow straight? Have I vacuumed and the lines are straight? You know what I mean? Like, it was kind of because I couldn't control the things that I went through. I wanted to control my external world. Andy Andrew, next. I just, listen, I want to tell you this. I'm James, this is Betty. Welcome to Life Today. You, you don't have any idea how special I believe the people who watch this program are. And, and I don't know if you watch, maybe this is your first time. So what am I in for? Well, you're in for quite a ride. Because if, if you're carried by whatever influence or spirit is carrying the viewers, you're going to be carried into somebody's life in a way that is nothing short of miraculous. In other words, you're gonna actually become not a discussion of love, but a demonstration of it. I mean, if you've ever just said, I mean, I'd really like to be loved. How about, I'd like to be love's expression. And I think that if you watch, you will be. Our guest today is from New York City, which is not for people from <laughs> Texas go to have a ministry. <laughs> but but she is is called there and her husband, yeah. Liberty Church, and here here's the title of a book. But listen to what Christine Kane. By the way, now Jack Graham, Prestonwood Church, you'll have to forgive me. A Baptist preacher, I understand. He, he called me one day, he said, James, don't tell anybody I told you. But Christine Kane's the best preacher I ever heard. <laughs> now there she is from Heel Song and I straight mm -hmm. well, can she can she lay it out? But mm -hmm. She's a blessing. This is what Christine says. Break free from the lies that hinder you and step into your God-given destiny. See, she does many things with the author of this book, Andy Andrew. Now, we've had Andy Andrews many times. This is Andy Andrew. She is free, learning the truth about the lies that hold you captive. Would you welcome Andy Andrew to life today? <laughs> Well, welcome down here to Texas. Thank you. It's good to be here. And how is New York City? <laughs> New York is amazing, but my daughter and I were very amazed by how much space there is between the houses here. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> yeah. She was excited to see the land and how much space there was in between the houses. So we're, but New York is amazing. Well, yeah. it's, you, you, your call there, no question about it. Yeah. I, I want you to tell us, yeah. our viewers, about the yeah. amazing journey. Some would say heartbreaking in some ways, yeah. maybe shocking, stunning, yeah. hard to fathom. Uh, but when you say she is free, that leads us somewhere. Yeah. And so just take us on this yeah. journey that you in depth take people on in this book in a way that it, I think, enriches their life and they yeah. may find a freedom they never imagined. Exactly. I, well, for me, the title She is Free, it came out because I gave my life to Jesus at 19 and I fell madly in love. But then fast forward, and I get married, have three kids under the age of three. I mean, it was fast, you know, had, had three kids. And it was one of those seasons, I don't know if you've ever heard the saying, you know, when you get married, you realize how selfish you are. And then when you have children, you realize how angry you are. <laughs> and so <laughs> I realized I was quite an angry person. And there was a lot of things that I had been protecting myself with. And in a way, faking it in my Christianity. And I would read the scripture and it came alive to me in some ways, but then there was this disconnect where I wasn't walking in freedom. There was a lot of bondage that I was walking in. I was controlling my world and protecting myself with anger, with manipulation, with, um, I walked in a shroud of shame, control. I would isolate myself from others, even though I'd be in crowds. I was very isolated and had my walls up. I mean, I showed up at church with my three kids under the age of three on my hips looking all good but really when I would go home I was a wreck and um, I was breaking down and depressed and had Were anxiety. You in ministry at the time? I was in ministry at the time and after I had my daughter I decided that it was time to kind of be a stay-at-home mom and work through my issues and so when I got 
to a place where I was scaring my kids. I was, it, I was dangerous in myself. And I went, if I keep living like this, I'm going to damage my relationships with my children and my husband. And I don't know if there's any going back. And I was, like I said, a serial faker. I was able to be at church and looked like I had it together. I knew how to be in ministry and do that mm -hmm. thing. Um, but when it all kind of fell apart for me was when I hit rock bottom. I remember one morning where my daughter, um, little baby, was crying and needed me to come and feed her. And I was so depressed that I couldn't get out of bed. And I remember rolling out of bed onto the floor and just sobbing, going, God, I don't know what to do here. I don't have anybody but you. And it was like almost like, oh, you know, I wish I had something else. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit said, that's right. I am all that you have. And the I am is the one who will heal you. And I was like in that place where this doesn't happen all the time, but it's like the tangible presence of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit were right there. And I realized in that place is where the disconnect maybe that I walked in with reading the word of God and walking this out in freedom was in his presence, whereas where he would heal me. And now it's been a journey because uh, what had happened when I had my children was Growing up, there was abuse when I was younger, um, sexual abuse when I was younger. I grew up in a very controlling environment. My mom and dad and I had broken relationship, and all of that came to the surface. And that is really was the beginning of the journey. It was of like she the free. fruit of what was sown in you, right. damaging suddenly the ugly aspect began exactly. to come out. Yeah. And you may not have immediately no. connected them. Okay, well, so what happens now? You've yeah. got this situation that's grown. Now you mm -hmm. suddenly you're alluding to the past. Yeah. So what did you conclude yeah. or what, what did you determine when you went back well, yeah. and saw what had happened? So I guess that moment for me was more like the catalyst of, okay, I can do this. I can actually walk in freedom, but it's going to be something that I have to begin to walk out. I think I had many moments, but the subtitle, yeah, learning the truth about the lies that hold you captive. I, I don't know why I hadn't put this together, but it was almost like I realized that as I was growing up, whether that was when I was abused or when I had broken relationship with my mom and we were codependent in strange ways that I believed lies um, that, that grew into something that became my reality. I, I like to liken it to maybe a pair of glasses. We all view the world through mm -hmm. our, our circumstances, right? I mean, our upbringing, different things that we've experienced and mine were scratched and marred and I had a view of the world that needed to be healed. And so as you unravel those lies, it's like you have to get in, you have to read the word of God. You have to get into the presence of God and go, okay, I'm believing a lie here, God, and I need you to show me how to replace that with the truth truth. What is now the truth of my pain, the truth of my past, those are real, but God, you can replace that and you can heal my heart. And so I, I really have begun to do that in, in multiple ways. That's the simplest thing I go back to. But, um, for me in particular, like I, you know, this journey began, but I, there was this moment with my son. So he was, he was three years old and, um, Control was one of the main things that I have dealt with. And still, sometimes it pops up. Like, you know, control to the, I'm like, is this flower straight? Is that mm -hmm. pillow straight? Have I vacuumed and the lines are straight? You know what I mean? Like, it was kind of because I couldn't control the things that I went through. I wanted to control my external world, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I want to, I can't control circumstances that happen to me. So I'm going to control people. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to control my house. And there was a catalyst once again moment for me when I had perfectly cleaned the toy room <laughs> and I had made breakfast and my kids were eating and my eldest son took the Legos and that sound of them dumping out on the ground, I lost my mind. And I started screaming at him to the point like where my... he just made a mess. He just <laughs> was playing with his toys. <laughs> you know, yeah, he made a mess. He was playing with... But the sound of the Legos pouring out brought me to a place where I had him shaking. My three-year-old son was scared and shaking. My husband looked at me. He goes, you go upstairs. <laughs> go be with Jesus. <laughs> And I remember going up there and I was broken going, God, I don't want to live like this, but okay, I love that you talked about love a second ago because that's where God went, can you just let me love you? Because if you would let me love you, instead of striving for my love, you could live from this place of love and become love and you would heal these relationships. And I remember going downstairs and apologizing to my son and he had cleaned up. That was a problem. <laughs> And he goes, look, mama, I cleaned up for you. I was like, no, no, this is a toy room. <laughs> Dump out the toys. Uh, but that for me was a moment where I went, okay, 
God, you've got to heal me. And it was kind of like one of those moments where you're like, I don't know how, but I'm willing to continue to put one foot in front of the other and let him peel back the layers and continue to heal me. I and mean, I'm still on this journey today, right? There's <laughs> not perfect. <laughs> well, we're all on well, the I journey. Mean, <laughs> we all are, right? <laughs> but I think this is one of those things where as, as long as I sit in the presence of God and sit with the word of God and I allow him to love me and I go, okay, Here's the lies I'm believing. God, I'm a hot mess, <laughs> but I want you to heal me. And I want to show my kids how to do this well, too, that there's a mama. You have a mama that's being healed and whole, and we can do this together. You know, one of the things that, that uh, I know that virtually every Christian mm. has observed and maybe witnessed in our own lives is that if we have an issue with somebody yeah. or for whatever reason there's a tension, could yeah. even be resentment or bitterness. Yeah. But a spirit of unforgiveness. Right. When you have that, mm -hmm. you have just invited all Align. manner of bondage into it's your true. life. All manner of defeat. Yeah. And there it's a very powerful statement when Jesus said, If you don't forgive, the Father won't forgive you. Now that's yeah. that's a huge statement. Yep. In other words, what is going on hmm. inside of us that is so disturbing to the Father who loves us wow. with all of his yeah. heart? in all the right ways is saying, if you carry that, something is yeah. happening here that has separated you from the flow that you are seeking and must have. Yeah. But if you're gonna block it with unforgiveness mm -hmm. and bitterness, there's something happening in the spiritual realm that's heavy, it's very significant. It is, yeah. So you found, uh, I think with your- With my mom. Your own, yeah, yeah. Your, your mom. With my, the relationship with my mother was huge. I think when you say that, Matthew 18, the story of the unmerciful mm -hmm. servant, I think that's one of the hardest he stories said you to read. you turned over to the tormentors, and to that's precisely what you're living exactly. in. You're tormented. When you do not yeah. forgive, you may think you're hurting them, but you're the one You being are tormented. tormented. And that was what, when I read that, because I feel like that's what we do. The, the story of the unmerciful servant is we, we go to church, we ask for forgiveness, we walk out the doors and we're like, I'm going to choke you. I'm taking you out. I'm not forgiving you today. And then we're, we wonder... We wonder why we are in prison, why we feel tormented. So with my mom, that was very significant. Uh, you know, for me, when I got saved at 19, it was like all rainbows and unicorns. I mean, I was like, oh my gosh. Like I had no, I, could, I didn't yeah. know that life could be this amazing, that I could be so loved. But then also at the right time, God begins to reveal things so that we can be healed of things maybe we were unaware of or lies that we believed mm -hmm. that grew into our reality and what we thought was true. And so I remember sitting with my mom and having this significant conversation with her and starting to ask her questions about my upbringing, poignant questions, and she was honest with me. And I, I was not a lady in that was moment. Just because it was even traced back to some of the some of the abuse. abuse that, some, well, some of it was the abuse and the bondage that actually our whole family was in. And you know, I, I really do believe everyone is doing the best they can with what they have. But then when they start to realize, when we all grow up and go, hey, that's not working for me anymore. So, so when I asked my mom poignant questions about our upbringing, she was honest with me. I actually said really horrible things to her, not ladylike words that I will definitely not repeat here. And I <laughs> got up and walked out and told her I hated her and wanted nothing to do with her. And for seven years, seven years, I made her pay. I was angry. I, was, I moved up to Australia, met my husband, got married, and was as far from her as I possibly could be. And I'd see her, but I was like, I was angry. And I, I remember one moment where she said to me, I only hope you can forgive me like Jesus has forgiven me. And that was one of those moments where I was like, I'm so mad at you for saying that. You are so right, but I am not <laughs> gonna do that right now. And I remember when I was pregnant with my first child, I felt the Holy Spirit say to me, would you want your children to treat you like you're treating your mother? And that was, I'm like, Ooh. no. <laughs> and I was reading the story of the woman caught in the act of adultery. And I know you, you know you can put the pieces together of the things we walked through as a family, and my mom's fine with me to share. But as I read that story, I remember I was massive and pregnant, and I fell to the ground weeping because I saw my mother as forgiven. And I said, oh, Father, will you forgive me for how I've treated her for the last seven years? And he said, yes, I do forgive you because you were the Pharisee that threw her down at my feet. And I'm like, whoa, I was okay. <laughs> so intense. And, um, but I remember being down on the ground, weeping and asking for forgiveness and feeling so loved and forgiven even in that moment, even my pharisaical ways. And right before my son was born, see my mom's a doula and uh, is amazing. So amazing at helping women through birth. And so she came over to Australia and we sat on the floor together 
folding laundry. And I just took a moment and I said, Mom, will you forgive me? for all of the years of how I made you pay, like you were the only person that's ever sinned on this earth. And with just weeping, it was kind of like, she's like, I've been waiting. <laughs> she's like, of course, I forgive you. And we embraced each other. And now I have to laugh because we moved to New York and my mom and dad have moved to New York as well. And they live upstairs in the same brownstone as we do in a different apartment because we have boundaries. <laughs> but um, they live in the same brownstone. And so we have so many opportunities still to this day for reconciliation. And it, we're not perfect, but there's things that still pop up. And I'm like, whoa, I'm mad at you. Or, whoa, we need to work this through. So forgiveness is constant. But I realized that I put myself in that torment and in that cage until I chose to forgive. And it's not just with her, obviously. There is moments of forgiveness we all are constantly Absolutely. walking through. And so that really is one of the keys to being able to say she is free. Yeah. And that can be true of anyone. Do you appreciate Andy sharing her story and <laughs> being willing to just open up about the battles? And I pray for you and your husband. It's Liberty Church, is yeah. that right? Yeah. Are you hard to find? And in, in, is it downtown? Where are you located? In New York City, uh, we are located in Dumbo, in Brooklyn. We're also in on Broad Street, in um, right in the financial district. We're also in the Upper West Side and in Union Square. Yeah. Well, everybody's going to be praying for you. The book is in the bookstores, so you can get it online. And uh, you know, we are right now trying to set uh, people free from far worse than molestation. We're trying to set little girls and children free from being taken in bondage and captive and sold in, in literally sexual trafficking, and it's a horrible thing. But we are able to uh, put God's arms of love around them because the people who watch like you, if you'd like to have Andy's book, we'd be more than happy to send it to you. Betty, we're going to look in, and, and sometimes, here, here's the deal. This is so real. And by the way, you're going to see Sheila Walsh but she has just become such a missionary. She's always had a mission heart to the world, whether she was women of faith or whether she was co-hosting the 700 Club or whether she's singing with Billy Graham in his crusades. But where she is now, working with us and putting arms of love around our desperate world, you'll see how moved she is. And I want you to, I want you to stay with this story. And then I want you to watch the opportunity to open love's door and let love, love flow freely. Watch. ຍຸດຊຸສະເປັດຍິມຍຸດ <coughs> một bạn nhưng có bố nhưng mà họ càng nghe thơ đồng bình về tới nhưng mà tạm quạt tới không về nhưng mà dù đọc cho nào vài nhưng sang hòa ngày vợ nhưng mà tôi đem một phiếu chứ kì thứ ba mình hòa ngày chứ nhưng mà tại không chết tới tiền một cái thứ ອັນຈອງຫົວໃນຫົວໃຈຄິມເຈດກັດໃຫ້ມັນຍັງ <coughs> She did not choose this life. We have to be a voice for those who have no voice. Jesus didn't just die for those of us who live in America. He died for girls who don't even know there is a God who loves them. And it's our joy and our responsibility to say, you know what? We're going to reach out our arms across the world and let girls like this beautiful girl here know you are loved, you are seen, and you have brothers and sisters around the world who are going to be part of changing your destiny.
you know, you may say, James, is it really possible to uh, change that girl's future? 100% positive. Yes. And we have entered into this uh, sexual trafficking crisis with the love of God, and we have been able to rescue thousands. We've been able to get many of them before they get them by giving them the lies and get them in bondage. Did you hear her say, I wanted to die? I mean, she's in such a horrible situation, but she said, my siblings, my brothers and sisters need me. I'm needed. Betty, people see that, and they are needed to totally correct that situation for her. In other words, to do what Jesus did, set captives free. Right. If you can understand, this is a 10-year-old, precious little girl. She hasn't had an opportunity to play with her friends, to giggle with them, and to run around and have fun with them. She has taken on the burden of her whole family, all her siblings, because they have to have something to eat. And so then she gets an opportunity, is what she thought it was, to go and to make money and to get food for her family. And she was deceived, and she was trapped, and she was abused, and she was told that this is the way it had to be. And she was beaten if she didn't obey them. And she was threatened of her life. And everything innocent was stripped from her little precious life and her body. Please help us help these children. Let's offer them hope. And we know that hope comes from Jesus Christ. But we are to demonstrate that hope through his love. We can set them free. So please join with us. How do you think Sheila Waltz is sent over there apart from love. She's sent by love, sent by people who watch life today. And she's sent to missionaries who left their comfort and planted themselves in the midst of all that suffering, full of love. And we will rescue them and take care of it. It takes, think about this, $128 is the average to reach, rescue, and begin to restore one person for a year. So we have targeted this year to reach out and rescue 2,500. But our viewers contacted us before we started asking you this time. They're gonna match over $300,000 of what you give, meaning what you give today will be doubled. That, that's amazing to me. $128 rescues one, now it's two. Some say, I can't even give 128. Well, 64 is now doubled, you got another. And I always, I mean, Betty knows, I always try to get people to reach beyond mm -hmm. what seems to be the simple and say, God help me do what might seem impossible. If you could help us rescue 10 and make a gift of $1,280, we got 10. No, now we got 20 because love is doubling that. So would you do it? Go online, please, or dial the phone number that's there as a prayer line and let it be a lifeline Take your bank card or write a check, make it to life, but call us and tell us you're putting it in the mail. But use your bank card like a check and say, here's the gift God's leading me to make today. I pray you're already moving right now to get that card or that check because it really is important to do it now. There's so many things to distract. Don't be distracted from what that girl is crying out for. Freedom. Jesus offers that because of love expressed by us. Would you do it now? Thank you. We have some gifts to send you that will bless you, I promise you. But you're giving an incredible gift. You're giving them a chance at freedom and a future. Behind the bright lights, there is a darkness where a world of violence and sexual abuse runs rampant, scarring the souls of millions of young children. With their bodies broken and hopes crushed, these children are trapped in a never-ending nightmare. With your help, Mission Rescue Life can shine the light of God's love in this dark world to reach, rescue, and restore children and young people to the beauty God designed for them to enjoy. With a generous opportunity of a $320,000 matching gift, your gift of $128 to help rescue a child will be matched to help two children. Your $64 gift will be matched to help rescue one child from the horrors of human trafficking and a $32 rescue gift will be doubled to $64. With your gift of any amount today, we'll send you the Names of God prayer journal. From Adonai to Yahweh, this journal is filled with beautiful photographs to help you reflect on 31 different names of God found throughout Scripture. 
With your gift of $128 or more, you'll receive the Names of God Bible. This special edition NIV large print Bible is engraved with the many names of God. A beautiful reminder that the God we serve is infinitely good. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,280, which will now help rescue 20 children. And you may request a beautiful Bridge of Faith frame canvas print by Thomas Kincaid. Please call, write, or make your gift online. What I've seen here is the abject poverty that people are living in. And so many young girls are forced into prostitution. They're trafficked because they're desperate. There's no money in the family. So often the father is a drunk, there is debt, and the only job they can get is at the mercy of a sex trafficker. Will you go to your phone? Will you go online? Will you call that number? Will you make the best gift possible so that we can reach, we can rescue, we can restore? Would you do it now? Well, from the bottom of our heart, Betty and I want to express uh, appreciation on behalf of everyone you put arms of love around and all the mission and relief workers you're supporting. If you'd like to have uh, Andy's uh, book on She is Free, Learning the Truth About the Lies That Hold You Captive, we'll be glad to send it to you. Just ask for it. I'd encourage some of your friends to uh, consider getting it online or in the bookstores, and you'll be praying for Andy and her husband there in the, the Brooklyn, New York City area. Would you join Betty and me in saying thanks to uh, Andy for being such a book? Thank you, Andy. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you a lot. Thank you. Bless your family. Thank you so much for watching. We really do thank you for your help. Are you concerned about your family being ill-equipped to manage resources when you pass away? Do you want to leave a legacy gift that impacts the lives of others? As a free service to our friends and partners, Life Planning Services, a ministry of Life Outreach International, is here to help with your estate planning needs and chart your financial future. Do not put off this important step to protect your loved ones and leave a lasting legacy. Contact Life Planning Services today. If you are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, come be a part of the Life Today studio audience. Go to lifetoday.org forward slash tickets, lifetoday.org forward slash tickets. Life Today is made possible by the supporters of Life Outreach International. Your gift will be used exclusively for the exempt purposes of life. The ministry features specific outreaches as examples of the programs it supports and conducts. Gifts are considered to be without restriction as to use unless explicitly stipulated by the donor. The ministry is a member of the ECFA.